we're just about four o'clock. Um, this is week six of the singer-songwriting sessions. Um, and as always, uh, before, before I carry on, I just need to read the disclaimer to you. So if you are under 18, please tell your parents that you're doing this session. Uh, feel free to ask any questions and make comments, but stay, late, stay safe online by only using your first name and don't give out any of your contact details. And I hope you enjoyed today's session. So last week we did blues. We were writing blues songs. Um, and this week I wanted to look at lullabies. And what, what I've been discovering the more I get into this is it's, it's not going to be that different from last week um because a lot of these lullabies have a chord progression that we looked at last week which was the one four five chord progression and as i say it, it's probably the most prolific kind of simple chord progression within popular music and well obviously nursery rhymes things like that it's a very straightforward there's nothing unusual there's nothing melodically weird it's just a, a easy predictable chords that will always work together and there's nothing wrong with that that's that's good. Um, so the first lullaby, what I thought we'd do today, I'm going to play through a few different lullabies. Um, I'm going to start with Brahms lullaby, which is probably, if you think of lullabies, it's probably the most, the, the song, the the song that will come to mind. Um, you, you will probably instantly recognise it. It was written by a German composer, Johannes Brahms back in the 1800s um, and there's lots of I found lots of different words for this song the ones I've picked up Wikipedia are probably closest to the original um, I think there was more these and thys in it and I've just got you and yours instead but um, you, if you go on YouTube put in Brahms Lullaby there are so many different versions there's some quite well known singers Celine Dion did a version and a, a singer called Jewel did a version both are a bit on the syrupy side for myself but uh you know each to their own this is this is just me playing it so i'm gonna play in the key of g if you remember last week we were talking about one four five chords within different keys the one four five chords in the key of g are g c and d so g is one c is four d is five and there are two sections to this song. Um, again, much like last week, there seems to be an A section and a B section. You might want to call them verse and chorus, um, or, or just A and B, because they the, the other the B section doesn't necessarily feel like a chorus. It just feels like a different section. So uh, anyway, enough chatter. Lullaby and good night. With pink roses be dyed With lilies overspread Is my sweet baby's head And then it changes Lay you down now and rest May your slumber be blessed Lay you down now and rest May your slumber be blessed. I've just realised uh, I haven't plugged in my big microphone, so I don't know what the sound is like at the moment. Um, if you just bear with me a second, I'm just going to do that. Okay, if there's anybody over at Cloth Cat who could just let me know if there's any issues with the sound, that would be really helpful. Um, hopefully, it's all working okay. Um, <clears throat> going back to Brahms Lullaby. So yeah, as I say, you've got you've got the verses, and the verses are just chord one. It hangs on chord one for three bars, then it changes to chord number five, and then it hangs on chord number five for three bars and changes back to chord number one. Um, and the melody is it's just based around the major uh, scale again. So 
Lullaby and good night with pink roses bedight with lilies all spread. Here's my sweet baby's head. And then it changes, it brings in the fourth chord. So we don't hear the fourth chord in the first section. And that just takes it off somewhere else. So lay you down now and rest. May your slumber be blessed. Lay you down now and rest. May your slumber be blessed. And I think there are a lot more words to it. It goes on a lot longer, but that's just the basic essence of the song. Um, another thing about this song is that it's in um, a time signature called 3-4, or it's a waltz. Um, I don't know if I've gone over time signatures much in the past, but generally, in sort of day-to-day -day pop music, we, we just tend to count, most things you'll hear are counted in a straight 4-4 four, four count, and what that means is there's four beats to a bar. So I think we went over this a little bit last week. Just bear with me a second, I've just need to check something yeah that's fine yeah so so i think i mentioned this we've got we'd normally count one two three four one two three four whereas with this one we're counting one two three one two three one so it's, it's just a different emphasis and um, there are three beats to the bar we were talking about 12 bar blues last week so basically there are three beats to a bar instead of four beats to the bar and a lot of this kind of music is written in that three four or another time signature which is similar which we'll come to later on in this session um so it's in three four it's just a one four five chord progression there's nothing harmonically um like there's nothing musically that's going on that sounds a bit strange or weird it's just very soothing and that's the point we're trying to get a little baby off to sleep or or whoever you may be singing your lullaby to mm. now there's another lullaby and i will admit i find this one quite disturbing and i think a lot of people do it's another song that everybody knows um rockabye baby but whoever wrote this song certainly did not like babies because as we know the lyrics are rockabye baby on the treetop when the room, when the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bow breaks, the baby will fall. The cradle will fall. Down will come baby cradle and all. It's not going to end well for the baby, really. So, I always find this one a curious one. But if there's one thing I do like in songwriting, um, I quite like sweet sounding music that has a very dark narrative, and this is touching on that really. Um, so again, just take a deep breath. I'm running out of breath here. I'm going to try and sing this. Um, do, 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 do. It's quite high for me and G, but just to stick in the same key, it's same chords, uh, one, four, five. It's an almost similar progression um, to, to the first half of Brahms' Lullaby, but it's the melody within the chords is pitched higher up. So uh, it's also in three, four time. Rock a bye, baby on the treetop when the wind blows a cradle will rock when the bow breaks a cradle will fall down will come baby cradle and all so this kind of very sweet melody and frankly slightly scary <laughs> narrative if you're a baby um and again, it's, it's mostly like the G changing to the D and it hangs on the D. And then I also slip the fourth chord in then going back. So we've got like Brahms Lullaby. So da 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 And then there's a C there, so it's slightly different. The cradle will rock when the bow breaks the cradle will fall and then this bit is a little bit different so it goes to the fourth chord down will come baby cradle and all and it just kind of ties the song up nicely harmonically nicely maybe not so much lyrically so 
again, it, it's very simple. It's um, just a kind of that three, four feel, which makes it sway a little bit more. You've got these sort of swooping little vocal lines. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's two sort of obvious examples. Then there's another one, which, again, I've heard this a lot. I never knew the whole song. It's more of an American song. Um, but Hush Little Baby, this one is a straight sort of actually in 4-4 time kind of song. But another a, a real thing you'll notice with this is a repetition of it. Um, again, it's using the 1-4-5 chord progression, but actually in this it's literally just using one and five, there isn't any four. Um, so I'm going to play this in C. So it's a C chord going to the five chord, which is G, because in the key C, the one, four, five chords, just to revise, are uh, C, F, and G. Even I had to think about that then for a moment. I swear, I, my brain only locks up when I know I'm live because I get the red light fever. I just sort of uh, sometimes momentarily <laughs> forget what I'm doing. So this one is another lullaby. Um, as I say, it's just counted in one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And uh, it's just um, two lines of melody that are just repeated over and over. It's super, super simple. It doesn't have to be overly complicated when it's a melody. This is just an example of a really simple one. So I'm going to uh, stop waffling and attempt to play this. So here we go. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird don't sing, Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. And if that diamond ring turns brass, Mama's gonna buy you a looking glass. And if that looking glass gets broke, Mama's gonna buy you a billy goat. And if that billy goat gets cross, Mama's gonna buy you a rocking horse. And if that rocking horse turns over, Mama's gonna buy you a dog named Rover. And if that dog named Rover won't bark, Mama's gonna buy you a horse and cart. And if that horse and cart fall down, you'll still be the sweetest little baby in town. Going off those lyrics, I think the last lyric should be you'd still be the most spoilt baby in town because Mama's buying an awful lot of big and expensive things for a little baby um so anyway <laughs> again that's just a, that's a really simple little song it's just um it, also those aren't necessarily the only lyrics again it's another song it's a really old song nobody knows who wrote it it's just an old american folk song uh, which is believed to have originated again down in the south deep south of america much like the blues which we covered last week um <laughs> And as I say, there are a lot of variations because it's the kind of song where people just probably just ad lib and make up lyrics as you go. It's just a simple thing to sing to a child or a baby. Um, so again, you don't have to do anything too complicated. It's just getting into a flow, picking out a few melodies. Um, we're going to do some writing later in the session. As I say, this is just me going through examples to give you an idea. The, the thing so far that we've just seen over and over is that everything's based around a major scale and everything is just um, sort of based around one, four and five chords or less than one, four and five, just one and five. Um, another song, one that you will definitely know, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. So once again, we've got... Um, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. 
So everybody's had that song sung to them as a child. Again, that's a 4-4 four, four timing song. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, really simple melody. Um, I have got a keyboard here, but I recently rediscovered my melodica. This is like a keyboard you blow into. So much like the keyboard over there, that would be a C note. So it's laid out the same as a piano. You've got, you know, your C, D, E, F, G, A, M, E, C. And then you've got your sharp slash flat notes, which are sharp or, sl or flat, depending on where you look at them. Uh, so if I put my head this way so you can say, so that's the C chord. Um, there is a reason I've just got this out, and I'm trying to think now why. Uh, what we're we doing? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. So we've done that song. Uh, oh yeah. So to show you the melody, so it's one of those really easy ones. So there's your C note. So it goes one, one, five, five, six, six, five, and then what it does a lot throughout the tune is just go from the five to the four to the three to the two and do that a lot like that. Very simple, predictive melody, nothing too crazy or jumpy. It's not jumping from one note quite far along to another note, like jumping in big intervals. It's just simple intervals, sticking with the um, major scale, and it's it's easy. It's easy to a baby's ears, um, and just quite soothing if you if you play it gently. Um, finally. Another one that I'd completely forgotten about that I remember singing as a kid, but this is another childhood song, Little Bo Peep. Now, this time signature is very similar to 3-4 time, or, or also known as a waltz, as I mentioned before. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Six, eight is kind of similar. And, and when I was first sort of studying music I used to get a little bit confused with three four and six eight but six eight has more of a kind of swing to it so instead of counting one two three one two three it's more like this one and a two and a three a one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and it's got that kind of swing to it so so that's what I think so three four is a bit slower maybe a bit more steady Six eighths a bit swingier. It's a bit jazzier, really. Okay, so little Bo Peep is in six eight. Mm -hmm. At least that's how I interpreted. Mm -hmm. So um, little Bo, so let's see a minute. Mm -hmm. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they will come home, wagging their tails behind them. So it's a nursery rhyme, but I think it definitely falls into the realms of um, lullabies as well. I mean, there's sheep involved. When you go to sleep, you're meant to count sheep if you can't get to sleep. So I think it's fairly lullaby. So it's got that nice, gentle swing. I mean, I played it a little bit faster there. If you did it really gently. Little Bobby has lost a sheep and doesn't know where to find them leave them alone and they will come home wagging their tails behind them okay wake up everybody right so uh little bo peep uh it's another simple song it's just quite a simple melody sort of repetitive back and forth it just goes between one and five except right at the end when it just jumps down to the four chord to finish the song um so just another example not a million miles away from everything else we've looked at so this is just the basis of getting into writing now uh i have also pulled up out of my own vault of songs this week um a song i wrote a long time ago and I realised it was about 17 or 18 years ago. Um, I put this on the end of what was my first album. I, I don't sell that album anymore because I just don't really identify with it anymore. But there's a song on there called Aeroplane Lullaby. So I think I wrote it, I was about 22, maybe 21. It might have been a bit earlier than that. But 
It was a song I wrote very late at night. Um, I can't remember how I spurred this one. The, the lyrical content's weird. I was just, I think I must have, I came up with like a little gentle, kind of steady guitar part. Anyway, that, that sort of thing. I'll play it in full in a minute. Um, and I ended up, I wanted to write a lullaby, but somehow I ended up writing a lullaby to an aeroplane, and it's called Aeroplane Lullaby. So, you know, the, uh, we're going through the usual tick in the boxes of what a lullaby is, but if you're getting creative with your writing, you can write about whatever you like in whatever style you like. So I'm going to play this. Uh, I'll just get my cap out. It's a good point, actually, at this stage. Some of you, if any of you are starting to play guitar, you're just messing around a little bit. As I say, check out Jack's videos. He's one of our tutors. He is the guitar tutor. So um, if you go and check him out, we also have Matty on keys. We've got um, names are going out in my head now. We've got an amazing drum teacher and he's based in America. I'm sorry, your name's just gone out in my head. I do apologise. Uh, but check all our tutors out. There's some really good ones. And uh, in fact, they're all really good. This is a capo. It allows you to transpose the tune you're playing. So, for example, if I, I've i written, I, I can transpose by changing and knowing how to change the chords. So, as I say, I've got, if we're in the key C and we're playing those one, four, five chords that you'll be dreaming about, um, no pun there to the lullabies, but C, F, G, C. And as we know, that's one, four, five. If we go to the key of G, G, C, D, G, that's one, four, five. But sometimes you can just use a capo if you want to change. Greg, ah, thank you. Sorry, Greg. I'm so, so sorry. It's Greg, Dre it's <laughs> Greg Granger, who's our drum teacher. So do check out his videos. Check out everybody's videos. Um, okay, so I've, as I say, I've got this little guitar part. <laughs> So I wanted that to be higher when I wrote this song. So I got my capo, which is a little clip. It clips onto the guitar. So like when you play a chord, you're pressing down strings. And that changes the sound of the guitar. If you play a bar chord, you can put your finger right across. And you can move those chords up and down the guitar. And basically, this capo does the same kind of thing. It makes a bar. So I'm going to play it on the fifth fret here. So normally that would be a C chord, it's actually now an F chord. Anyway, that's capos. This song, as I say, is called Aeroplane Lullaby. So I won't play the entire thing, I'll just play the main bulk of it. Um, playing lullaby um it, what happens then as it goes into a little instrumental then it plays that sort of b section again and then finishes on the verse um it's it's just a simple little song however after everything i've been talking about with the previous lullabies 
I'd never really overly thought about this song and I, I just went into analysing it a little bit. And there's some weird harmonic stuff going on with this one. Um, what, what I'll say first is the first section is quite straightforward because what's happening is you've got um, a one to six chord progression. So again, stick into that major scale, uh, major key. So um, just I'm going to take the cap off for a minute. So even though there's this... This kind of guitar part, which to somebody maybe who's starting out, it might sound a little bit fancy and complicated, but what's actually happening, I'm playing a guitar part that's just based around two chords. So, um, uh, again, I'll, I'll just put the capo on a second because I prefer singing it higher up. So, so what's actually going on is it's F. Now your day is done. Bye. Oh, what's he going to then? Bye. Oh, yeah, so then what's happening is it's going from the F to D minor. Now, F and D minor, um, if you're in the key of F, you may remember last week I spoke about uh, relative minor keys. Now, again, and we're getting into that zone of uh, getting a bit more into the theory, but... Uh, if, if we're in the key of C, so now your day is done, back to your hand a little one. That's a very wide version. Um, I'm playing a C chord, so I've just transposed it down. C chord is number one. A minor, or A minus seven, is chord number six. And if you look, all I'm doing is taking off one finger. So the chords are almost the same. A minor seven is almost the same as C, it's just that there's... Um, the extra note in there um, so if you were playing the C chord and you put the A in there it would turn into an A minor 7 so those are two chords that are just going to work really well because they're quite harmonically similar um, if anybody out there is familiar with Leonard Cohen um, a very famous song by him um, Alleluia which was also famously done by another guy who I really love called Jeff Buckley It's the same one to six progression. There's a little passing note in between, but it's just chord one, chord six. So another little thing to put in your writing notebook if you're thinking about how chords work together, one to six works. So that's quite normal, that first part of the song. But then what I realised is when it goes to the second part, it I'm not going to get too much into this, and I'll tell you why. It jumps out of key, basically. So it jumps to... Um, it goes from an F. So, now your day is done. Back to your hanger, little one. Blah, blah, blah. So when it changes, it goes to an E flat. And then it goes to an E7. So the E flat isn't within the key of F. It's actually, if you were to play an F major chord and you were to add that E flat, it would turn your chord into a D7. Um, Sorry, an F7. <laughs> Getting confused now. So um, it would be like the the dominant seven, which we talked about dominant sevens last week being um, bluesy chords. I'm, I am now becoming very aware that I'm going down that black hole of theory. So what I want to say to you is, ultimately, what happened is when I wrote this song, I didn't have all of this knowledge or theory. I, I knew some chord shapes. I knew bits and bats but didn't really fully understand how anything went together. And this is the most important part of getting into songwriting. Just go with the flow. Just kind of, I when I was trying to find it out, because when I was writing this song, I just literally started off with a little idea. I started off doing some classical guitar as a kid. So I used to do a lot of pieces that happened to use these shapes. And then I just kind of wanted a different section that was different. And I happened to stumble across chords where I just suddenly thought, oh, what if I put my fingers here? So I've gone from here. Oh, what? oh, what if I go to there? Oh, I quite like that change. Where could that go? What if, uh, oh, if I go between those two notes. And what happened was I ended up with a chord of uh, the B flat and then it went down one semitone, uh, one semitone. So it literally just changed. It transposed again. So it's... If you look at it as it goes from the key of F into like a B flat key, and then it goes into A, then it goes to B flat, and then it goes to E, which is another chord. 
that doesn't matter. But that's just gobbledygook. What matters is I just messed around with the song and I found something I liked. So that's kind of my point that, you know, you just have to kind of get curious and explore and actually start from a simple point of view. But that, that's another little lullaby anyway, as I say. Some chords work really well together. There are reasons for that. And some chords are just weird and all over the place, but can add a nice bit of tension. Um, so, uh, so that's Aeroplane Lullaby anyway. Um, what else have we got here? Ah, yeah. So getting into the melody writing. Again, we've talked about, you know, last week. You should know that major scale now. Just hear it, recognise it. La, 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 da, 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 da. Maybe, you know, you've got those notes, but you might be somebody who initially has trouble kind of finding melodies that feel satisfying. Um, last week we looked at the minor pentatonic scale, which is, well, we looked at both pentatonic scales. A pentatonic scale is where it's basically made up of five notes, unlike the major scale, which is made up of the seven notes. And as I say, the, the top note, which is number eight, is number one. You're just going back to the start, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it carries on like that. Um, if it's got seven notes in it, by the way, incidentally, I've got another big word for you. Apparently, that's a heptatonic scale because a heptagon is a seven sided shape. As I said, a pentagon, pentagons are five sided shapes. Pentatonic scale is a five note scale, a heptagon is a seven sided shape, a heptonic scale is a seven note scale. So, you know, you can never stop geeking out on your music theory. Um, so, yeah, I was talking about pentatonic scales and we looked more at, we were kind of, I did a, a singing class last week, just singing the minor pentatonic. And this week I've got a video that I'm going to be posting later, just practicing the major pentatonic. So I thought it'd be nice to have a look at like just really breaking things down, just keeping it really simple and just looking at writing some soothing little kind of lullaby ditties songs. Um, so C major, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ma major pentatonic scale of that is one, start on one, one, two, three, five, six, one. So Ooh. like that now it's always fun to mess around with other instruments that you know you can sort of have a play around making melodies on one thing I pulled out this week just out of my box of tricks as I call it is a tin whistle and you may have seen these you can pick these up I mean you can you can pick them up as cheap as about five quid five pounds um, if you go online, you'll find more expensive ones. But a tin whistle is just a really simple little instrument, and it's something that you can play around with to make melodies. Um, it's just this is a tin whistle in the key of D, uh, which many of them come in, but you can get them in different keys. I've got one in the key of C over there. Um, but I'm kind of it's slightly bigger than the other one, and I bought it not long ago, and I feel a lot more comfortable with the key of D one. So. What you've got is you've got six holes down the, the front of it. Uh, the key of D, like any other scale, we've got that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you are somebody who wants to know as much as you can about music theory, the key of D is the key that has two sharps in it. So it has an F sharp and a C sharp. So it's D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and then D. So You've got your six holes, what you have to do, you put one on there, you're going to use the flat part of your finger, the finger pad, and you put, this is my left hand, left hand goes on the hole number one, the one highest up, so you've got one, two, three of your left hand like that, your thumbs on the back, and then you put one, two, three on the front, and your thumbs behind those fingers there. So I'm not an expert tin whistle player, but I, I do play saxophone, so similar theory, you sort of, you rest the whistle against your lip and put your, like that, and then you just kind of gently, to get the low note, you want to blow gently. Oh, you could hear there was a high sound there. So that's a low D note. 
And that only works when you're covering all those holes nice and tight. And then what you do, you just kind of blow gently and you make like a T sound. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I never claimed to be an expert. So what I'm going to show you, what you do, you, you pull your fingers off one by one. So that's D. If you take that bottom one off, it becomes E. All your fingers are always staying on the holes. If you take the next one off, that's F sharp. So I, I'm not going to say the names. I'm just going to say the numbers for the intervals because we're just thinking in terms of a major scale regardless of key so that's number one that's note number two that's note number three that's note number four that's note number five that's note number six and then you can use your little finger you need to take all fingers off for note number seven and then you put all your fingers back on but you take the top one off for the next octave note up. So I'm gonna play that through now for you. So that was played really badly, but. And then from there, you can carry on. Um, so what happens is now, there's no kind of other key, you can get another octave. So you can get two octaves out of a tin whistle. You just have to blow harder. So from that D, put that finger back on, take that finger off. Woo, that hurt my ears. So these can go very high. You, you might not necessarily use the really high ones, but the point is of this, it's just another way where you've literally just got a major scale. You can start to play around and make some melodies up with it. So uh, I don't know, let's start on. with notes you you might want to um i've got my whiteboard here again so you might think to yourself oh, i'm gonna play write some numbers down and play them and see how they sound so let's start with one uh, okay so we do one two three two one and then i'm gonna try two three four two Three. Okay, so I've just scribbled down some numbers. Now. Let's let's give it a go. I've got one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, two, three. Okay, so I've got that's one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, jump into the two and then three. We'll see how that sounds. works as a start of a little melody um i might go a little bit higher now so i might pick some higher numbers um so maybe we'll try uh let's try five six let's do five and six again for the sake of seeing how the repetition thing goes five six five six four and then we can do let's keep it simple we're not we just want it to be a simple, soothing, easy to follow tune. It's working towards a lullaby. Four, five, four, five, three, two, one, two, and then we'll finish it on a one because we know, you know, if we go back to that one, that should resolve it nicely. So I'm just gonna play through these with my little tin whistle toy and see what we've got. I'm going to start that again. Made a mistake, and that's okay. If you make a mistake, just start again. Uh. So that works as a, as a really simple melody. Um, so you could have a go at doing that. You could, if you've got access to a little keyboard, do, you know, use your keyboard, do the same thing, just write down some numbers and, and start to play around. Um, 
thought it would be nice to do a little bit of lyric brainstorming. Ah, but before that was it, before I do that, what I also wanted to mention is if you want to get it even, if you want a much simpler approach, if you are struggling initially getting melody ideas, um, as I say, we've talked about the um, major pentatonic scale. So I've thought I was all prepared to be, now I can't find my rack. There we go. I've got an old bit of fleece here, this will do. So if I clean this board off, so now I'm going to reduce the choice of notes that we have, and by using a minor, a major pentatonic scale, it's it's one of those where it'll just really work no matter what you sort of pick out. So, um, as I say, we we've, we've got one two, three, we don't play four, that's not included, one, two, three, five, six, and then it goes back to one again, so we'll just put that in brackets. So again, from the little tin whistle, here we go. So it already sounds like a little melody in itself, so I'm just playing around with it and already you can hear little melodies coming together so um if we go so we'll start off with hold on a minute I can't remember what I did now. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're gonna use those notes. I'm just gonna start scribbling down some, some ideas. So one, two, three, four, five, uh, three, two, one. And we'll let the one hang on for twice as long. One, two, three, five, three, two, one. Five, five, three, five. So let's put six, five, five, three, five, and then five's gonna last all that length. So we've got and then what I might do. Because what we saw with some of those other lullabies was we were seeing like a repetition um, a lot in the melody. So I, I'm just going to use the one, two, three, five, three, two, one again. One, two, three, five, three, two, one, which lasts to the end of the bar. And then I'm going to have a different line for the fourth line. This just makes me think of recorder class and anyone out there who knows about recorders and small children playing them it's not always a pleasant thing to listen to um anyway uh and then we could finish it as i say, i'm going to finish on the one again like before because i think it resolves it and it's it's a predictable gentle sound that is what you want for a lullaby so what I'll do, I'll do, uh, so five, six, three, two, one. So then we're going to go five, six, three, two, and then let the one just hang out. So there, I've got, I've got a simple little melody. to a song, it's in the key of D, 
I'm trying to think what D is now on this. So C, G, F. Oh, I think that's pretty good. Oh. which I haven't covered with you before. It's um, second fret. We hold the uke that way, uh, this side of the uke. So if you remember, you've got G, C, E, A. G string, finger number one on the second fret. And then on the next string, on the same fret, put your second finger and then your third finger. So all three fingers are all in a line. Okay. So... I'm just gonna, in fact, I don't even need that first finger because I'm just gonna pluck this string, this string, and this string. So G, the C string, E, and A string. So already there, now I've got a little lullaby melody. So say it, it doesn't need to change chord all over the place. It can just, just play those three notes like that. La, la, la. look at some words. I've just realised we're already at 47 minutes. I was worried today that I wouldn't be able to keep this class going for a very long, but apparently there's more there than I realised. Right, so we're going to clean this board off. Should I keep that melody in my head? What do we know about a lullaby? I, you know, I'm just going to quickly write down those intervals because if I don't, I might forget them. So it was um, one, two, three, five, three, two, one. Um, to remember now. <laughs> ah, yes, six, five, five, three, five. And then same again. And then five, five, six, three, two, one. Okay, so that's my melody. So just quickly, um, just going to get some ideas down. So we've got, what, what do you think of when you go to sleep or, or when you're trying to go to sleep or, or being relaxed, just anything to do with lullabies and sleep. We were dreams. There is anyone out there? Uh, even, even Mr. Over at Cloth Cat, if you've got any ideas, you can help me out here. Uh, dreams, I'm going to put dreams, I'm going to put sleep. Um, twilight. Maybe you're going to sleep in the twilight. The same. And in this particular one, I'm staying away from things like aeroplanes. I'm just going for a straight up simple, oh, it's a little baby, let's sing it to sleep because it won't stop crying. I don't know about that. Um, dreams, sleep, twilight. Um, oh, anything? Oh, but reading a book. Yeah, okay. So, um, so stories maybe. Story, a uh, book, um, milk, 
Yeah. And my son, even now, he's getting close to three, but he still likes his milk before he goes to sleep. Uh, so, lie down. Uh, head on the pillow. Um... So you, you see that sort of thing. So maybe, um, okay, just for now, we can always improve this. But. So maybe, oops, there we go. Now it's time, what was it? Now it's time to go to sleep. Now it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> it's a starting point. So. Might not be the most original, but hey, that's okay. We're just getting ideas out there. Now it's time to go to sleep. Um, um, now it's time to go to sleep in this twilight time. Um, close your book and close your eyes. Oh, you see, there we go. Close your book and close your eyes. Um, to my lullaby. <laughs> Feeling really pleased with myself right now. <laughs> To my lullaby. So there, in a matter of like 10 minutes, I've just thrown a little lullaby together. Songwriting's not hard, you can just, you know, just have fun with it. It's, it's just about having fun and seeing what you can come up with. So, I'll leave you with this. Now it's time to go to sleep. In this twilight time Close your book and close your eyes To my lullaby Good night! <laughs> Don't go just yet. So yeah, there you go. Just some ideas for writing a lullaby. Um, don't forget to check out the previous videos I've done. And um, I'm... Uh, there's going to be another one as usual next week, uh, which I'm not completely set in stone yet, actually. I've been jiggling around the later bits of my lesson plan. So I think next week we are going to be looking at something called modulation. Um, how do I put this without scaring you? It's, it's not really scary. If you have a C major chord and you change it to a minor chord, C minor, we call that modulation. So modulating between keys. So, for example... I'm not going to get too much into this now, but this is where we're going to be looking next week. So there's an A. So it stays on the A, but it goes to the minor. So I'm going to be exploring that kind of thing a little bit next week. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave it there now. So go away, write, enjoy writing, do some lullabies, get, write really simple things. I am aware that sometimes I throw a lot of information out there, but just keep it simple and just take from whatever I've put out there anything that really grabs you or makes you think, oh, I want to know more about that and focus on that. Um, and, and you can always request that I'll, you know, if you've got any questions about anything, you can always ask me in the comments. Um, as I say, I can always record extra little videos that'll be in my playlist if, if you would like me to cover anything. Okay, and I'll see you next week. Bye!